Okay, this is your instructor, Alice View, and this is kind of an off-the-cuff request for an additional video on Stellarium and some of the, the features we haven't talked about yet, and some of the fun features, actually. So I'm just grabbing this evening's sky, and there are some things that I am noticing that um, people are turning on and off and maybe not even realizing that they're turning on and off. And so one of the things right here is you'll notice that when we get the planets, right, so there's Mars, and you click on it and you get that little lovely crosshair. If you hit the space bar, it will center it, and that allows you to zoom in and out and, you know, get close enough to see the planet and its moons as well. And so that's helpful, um, but oftentimes so, or sometimes you can get unintentionally those labels turned off. If you don't want to see all the details over here, you can right click on the screen to get rid of it again. And then down in the bottom, on the bottom menu, about middle way, you'll see a little icon that looks just like Saturn next to a, 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 an icon that looks like galaxies. Well, this is the planet label, so if I turn that off, then this just kind of looks like another red star similar to Betelgeuse right here. Alright, so turning those on can be helpful. The deep sky objects is off. If that's off, if you turn it on, it will start to kind of pop open all of the, the different great binocular and telescope objects, and in some case naked eye objects as well that you can see. Right now we're doing constellation stuff, so it gets in the way a little bit, so I'm going to turn that off. Um, you have a variety of constellation buttons that come in standard. Sometimes there's missing ones. I did put a directions on how to add the constellation borders so that you can see them. I did put that in our discussion board, um, but it's there. And then you've got the constellation pictures. And we're right now we're looking at the modern pictures. So this would be the International Astronomical Union view of the sky, those 88 constellations that are part of our scientific lingo that we can use around the world, not necessarily all of the cultural constellations. We're going to talk about that because that's the fun part. Um, and then labels as well and stick figures. So you have these here. So one of the fun things that you can do is change it up. So oftentimes I've changed my borders to pink because the original color that was there on my installation just really wasn't helping me at all. Oftentimes a lot of these things you can do in this sky view options and if you go to sky culture one of the things here you'll see is um, showing boundaries and then this color block. So if you click on the color block you can then choose the color that you want represented. So you can find one that works well for your monitor, for your eyes, for your purposes and how you share. All right, so that's how you do those colors. And this is also a good place to turn things on and off as well, change up the colors um, and do that other thing. But the other thing that you can do in this box, so let's just quickly before we do that, let's get rid of the stuff that can get in the way. So we're just showing stars at this point, right? So we have the stars. We're looking pretty early in the evening. We've got this whole set of what we consider our northern hemisphere winter constellations, our, our kind of highlight winter, con winter constellations with, the, with Orion down here, right? So our winter hexagon. So Orion and Taurus, Auriga the charioteer, Gemini, the twins, Canis Minor, Monoceros is hiding in there, but Canis Major as well. And so there are key star elements in here that help us loop around and kind of make um, make a big hexagon in that sky. Um, and like I said, this is the International Astronomical Union version of this, but we're going back before that. So that's pretty modern. That's the, you know, I think it was 1928, I'll have to go look that up, don't quote me, that those were set um, as scientific regions of the sky. But we know that there's a lot of current, modern, um, and ancient cultures that looked at the sky with different eyes and had different stories in the sky. Um, so this is the great thing about the downloaded version is we can go take a look at that. So coming back into the sky and viewing options, if you stay in sky cultures, um, right now we are in modern, so we will go back to modern so that we get that kind of standard. We'll have that kind of set as our default. But 
one of the first cultures that we're going to be talking about is Babylonia, right? And so that takes us back several thousand years. And so we can actually say, well, let's go look at the sky and the stories in the sky, the constellations that are in the sky from that time period, right? And this Mulapin is one of the earliest um, records that we have for the constellations um, that were at that time um, kind of used as as the standard, right? Okay, so we've got that set and then we're going to come back over here and we're going to turn on the constellation lines and the names and we see things completely different, right? What's fun is you're going to see some similarities and you're going to see some differences. So the bull, so Taurus the bull as we know it now, is was the bull then. So two constellations are incredibly old. So Taurus, what we know now is Taurus the bull and Leo the lion are probably two of the oldest historical, so written and or drawn, right? captured, identified, and and used as a, you know, this is our uh, shared reference to the sky um, very early. So we have the bull right here, and here is the lion as we, as we see it from Babylonia. Now we haven't changed time, so it would be interesting to, well, we'll get to that later, but it'll be interesting to back up time into the same time period um, because it will change a little bit of our view depending upon the latitude that you pick. So we can take a look at the sky. We can go back here. Orion is we have a shepherd. Um, what we had as uh, Orion's dog. Uh, Canis Major is now an, an arrow. We still have twins. Interesting, but that kind of makes sense right up here. The great twins based on just the way those stars, Castor and Pollock as we know them now, um, appear in the sky. We have this long uh, snake and raven which is still carried on today as one of our modern constellations just with different names. Um, what is interesting is what we now have as Virgo. The maiden is a furrow and a wheat a branch of wheat, so a farming agricultural reference. And it's great because uh, Virgo the maiden holds right wheat in her hand. So we can see the modern International Astronomical Union constellations that historically come heavily from the Greek, still picking up what the Greeks had picked up from someone else, in this case, Babylonia. So yeah, there was a lot done before the Greeks. Um, so this is just kind of a fun way to get an idea for what people when they went out into the night sky would point at and say, oh look, that is this. So our, um, what we see as Ursa Minor, the baby bear, is um, a wagon of heaven right up here. Um, yeah, and then the Ursa Major, the big bear, is another wagon with a fox and a, and a sheep, the ewe. Um, and you can do this with several different cultures together. So you can just come on over here and find things that you are interested in. So we are looking at indigenous Arabic. And you may or may not get constellation pictures, but you should be able to at least get different constellation stick figures. And we'll do one more. Um, the Lakota, oh Hawaiian Star Lions is always great too. Um, mainly because I love this lizard. So there is a lizard in the sky that starts all the way here at Ursa, Ursa Major and here's the Big Dipper which makes the tail. And it works its way, its long backbone it is its one paw is over here where the tail back haunches of the lion is and then all the way through here so it's a very very large constellation and then we're gonna roll uh, time forward a little bit so that we can catch this um, this ship we will roll time up. I hesitate to do it too fast. There is a ship and there's also here what's called the Navigator's Triangle. The triangle is still 
something that we use currently because this is our summer triangle. So this navigator's triangle that you see right here as part of this ship, um, uh, this is Vega, Deneb, and Altair, and we see that as our summer triangle. Um, it's three different constellations in the modern IAU set with uh, Lyra the Harp, Cygnus the Swan, and, a, and Aquila the Eagle um, combined here in a completely different view, making sails and the hulls of this ship along with uh, navigation stars. This is important, especially because these three stars would appear at different rise points. And so for folks navigating on a very flat ocean horizon, would be able to do some time judgment based on how these stars would rise. And so if we put them down here on the horizon, we could see that if I had picked the ocean horizon. So let's get rid of buildings and whatnot and put them down on the ocean and we can still watch these two stars and how they appear as they rise, right? We've got Dinab and then Vega. All right. And then to put things back, you would just come back in to Sky Cultures and you can go down to where it says Modern and that should reset things back to where you started with kind of our default um, uh, International Astronomical Union set of stars and with their borders on we can see those 88 regions in the sky. Okay so I hope this has helped and given you a chance to get in, change some things up to make them work for you and have a little bit of fun.